Hey, Dr. C here with you. So this is going to be a deep dive in selenium. If you're curious about all things selenium in your thyroid, buckle up, <laughs> put on your hat, and let's go to it. For a quick summary, uh, selenium is the, the, the robin to iodine's batman. <laughs> These are the two things that your thyroid needs more than anything. And in a state of selenium deficit, the thyroid can't juggle any changes in iodine status at all. So it's critical to have enough of that. Now you can get too much, and in supplementation, that's, that's possible. You can get enough to where it's counterproductive for your thyroid, but you need some. In terms of action steps, it seems that dietary selenium has some benefits <coughs> that are independent from supplemental selenium. And those who have autoimmune thyroid disease, they can benefit from both. So I do encourage having two to four Brazil nuts per day, so you're assured adequate dietary selenium and also a small amount of selenium supplementation per day. All right, let's dive in and go further. So selenium and thyroid function. Selenium is used everywhere in your body, but the area that has the highest concentration is in your thyroid. So there are 25 known proteins that are dependent upon selenium, and half of those 25 roughly are all ones needed for thyroid hormone formation. And these are critical for every step of that whole process. We need them for <clears throat> bringing iodine into the thyroid, for activating iodine, for binding it onto thyroglobulin, for getting it out of the thyroid, for using it in the tissues, for getting rid of the leftovers, all of it. It all depends upon adequate amounts of selenium. And it's also relevant in forming the antioxidant glutathione. And we now know that a big part of thyroid disease comes about because there may not be enough glutathione. And your thyroid really needs glutathione because it forms iodine as a free radical. And glutathione is there to help prevent damage from the iodine formed inside the thyroid. But in a lack of selenium, we can't make glutathione and more damage ensues. So the net effect is that selenium acts as a buffer. And even if iodine intake is a little above, a little below ideal, or if it's fluctuating, then selenium cuts the risk of that being harmful. Studies have shown that adequate selenium cuts the risks for Hashimoto's general hypothyroidism, subclinical hypothyroidism, and also thyroid cancer. And that's true both for the development of thyroid cancer and also the uh, the staging, the severity of thyroid cancer. Now, like a lot of nutrients, selenium excess can also be harmful. And by and large, apart from paradise nuts, I talked about those in another video, that won't happen by dietary selenium, but it can happen through supplemental selenium. So we'll talk more about that, and don't take more is not better. <laughs> we know that with selenium and with it forming glutathione, the risk of your thyroid proteins being damaged are much lower. And some studies have borne this out. So some big data sets were done from about 3,000 people that had adequate amounts of selenium and another 3,000 that were lower in selenium. And they looked at the rates of all those types of thyroid disease. And they saw that healthy selenium status cut the odds by 95% or 75% for some of these conditions. So a really dramatic difference. So where else do you get it besides the Brazil nuts? Well, they've got it, they've got a lot. Next up, we think about things like halibut, shrimp, pork, uh, steak, turkey, beef, chicken. So far, a lot of animal protein foods. Then we've got sunflower seeds, we've got some in brown rice, we've got beef and oatmeal. So animal foods are quite dense, with the exception of those Brazil nuts. And the Brazil nuts, they're in a class by themselves. You know, if you've got a couple of those per day, you're covering the bases. I just can't speak enough about those. So then the question is, how many people are low in selenium? How common are these deficiencies? Well, they are not common as far as severe deficiencies in the modern world, but they do occur to people that are on restrictive diets. Though also those that have chronic inflammatory bowel disease, like Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, but those who avoid animal proteins might be low, and those who cut out grains and legumes can also be low in that. So those are the main dietary pitfalls. And as a generalization, the more food categories you've got in your diet, the better. We also see that within populations known to have thyroid disease, those, those populations tend to be lower in selenium than populations overall. And that's thought to be one of the big links. 
So then the question is, well, does it help to take the supplements? So you don't want to have, you don't want to run low in it. The deficiency can drive thyroid disease. But once you've got thyroid disease, do selenium supplements have anything to offer? And this is pretty encouraging. We've got at least three large placebo-controlled double-blind studies showing that selenium supplementation can lower the level of thyroid antibodies. And this can be over a period of about six months. And this is often a reduction of between 25 to 55% for thyroid peroxidase. The levels can be as dramatic for th antithyroglobulin, perhaps not just as much, but anti-TPO can go down by a pretty fair amount just by selenium. The study showed that the effective dose is about 100 to 200 micrograms per day. And they've also shown that selenium supplements can lower abnormal findings as found on thyroid ultrasounds. And this is great because those same supplements really had no clear effect on thyroid hormone levels. They didn't shift them up or down, good or bad, but they did lower the autoimmune process. They've also shown that with Graves disease, selenium supplementation can help the thyroid heal up more quickly and reduce the risk of developing Graves eye disease. So really good thing. Now, how would you know if you're low in selenium? Well, testing is not essential, but it can be considered for those who are curious about that. By and large, selenium is something where it's rather predictable in terms of your needs and your absorption. There are some nutrients like, say, vitamin D or iron to where it's harder to predict how much you need and how much you're absorbing. So in those cases, testing can be helpful. But with selenium, like I mentioned, tests are not perfect. You know, we can check blood levels, urine levels, uh, hair levels, tissue levels. And the blood levels are generally normal until they're not, until they're like way too high or way too low. So they're not that good at predictors. Uh, red blood cell levels are a little more sensitive, but they're still not perfect. So it's not something I would say you would need to test for. By and large, eat your couple of Brazil nuts, have about 100 micrograms in your supplementation. You're going to be in good shape from that. And the 100 micrograms, we do include that in the daily reset pack by default. So when you're on the reset pack, your bases are covered that way. But again, there's parallel benefits by having it in supplementation and having dietary sources. Now, with supplementation, more, 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 more is not always better. There's data saying that the further you get above 400 micrograms per day, you can start seeing symptoms like diarrhea, fatigue, hair loss, joint pain, and others. There have been some poorly produced supplements that had hundreds of times above the safe limits. Not a common problem, but it has happened. And clinically, I have seen many people that are on a lot of different supplements, and they never really thought through how their total amounts of selenium all added up. But you can get way above that 400 microgram level, and that'll actually cause the same kinds of symptoms you can get by poor thyroid function. So, so yeah, in terms of toxicity from the diet, probably won't happen. I did do a separate video on Brazil nuts. You won't get toxic from Brazil nuts. There's a pretty obscure thing called paradise nuts, which I've never heard of being available in the States. If you do, don't eat them. <laughs> they can make you toxic pretty quickly. So, so yeah, but supplements, you think about 400 micrograms as being a good upper, level, upper limit. So even the most conservative medical review groups, they've looked at this data and they've concluded that Selenium supplements are a good thing for thyroid disease. One review showed that we can see thyroid peroxidase antibodies reduce within three months and keep on reducing on a 12-month time frame. And this can occur uh, quite markedly with no big drawbacks. So deep dive, selenium affects really all the known pathways involved with utilizing thyroid hormones. We get it from a big range of foods. Some whose diets are restrictive can be low in that but there are parallel benefits by having it in the diet and having some in supplementation, but not too much. <laughs> All right, Dr. C with you. Take great care, and I'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.